I'd like to thank my patrons for making these videos possible, especially Max. Max. Yes, I... I remember that name. Excuse me, I... have not heard that name since the time before the fall, when the sun was warm and hearts were strong and laughter came easy. Anyway, isn't it interesting how obsessed we can get with the idea of becoming an artist? For some of us, some considerable portion of those of us on this art path, it's very important to be an artist and think of ourselves as artists, to self-identify with that label, with that tag. Now, trust me, it's not important to be a successful artist or a commercial artist or a popular or famous artist or really to reach any imagined success milestone. It's just important for a lot of us to be an artist. That's the critical gap. It's at the same time large and small. It's the gap between being someone with a creative drive who doesn't consider themselves an artist and someone who does. This is a much more important gap than the one between amateur and professional, between intermediate and masterful artist. This gap is the crucial one that contains life-defining force, and so it is a source of great joy and suffering for many. If you're familiar with my viewpoint on this channel, you know I think the suffering part is unnecessary, and not in a, oh, stop suffering once you get good and earn your happiness way, but more in a unnecessary suffering is always unnecessary, so drop it today, right now, kind of a way. Now let's look at why you might feel like someone with a creative drive who doesn't consider themselves an artist and is suffering because of that. Possibility number one, you've turned the idea of artist into something that it's not. You have lovingly crafted an imaginary goal. It's a very beautiful goal. It's like 20 feet tall, made out of heartwood, and covered in intricate carvings of strangers leaving energetic comments on your art, art directors cold emailing you wondering if you can fit them into your schedule, and your dad getting misty-eyed saying, wow, I didn't understand for so long, but you're so good at this, son. I'm so glad you stuck with it. It is indeed a very beautiful goal, but it's imaginary. You make it solid and stunning through sheer mental will. Once you manifested this incredible totem, you launched it about a thousand feet across a darkened plain. It's so far now that you can't actually see it out there through the still darkened air. All you can see is the encroaching night mist of your failures curling around your ankles. You did this all on your own. There is no set of criteria that once met means you're an artist. There is no thing that can occur on any given day that will make that the first day of your life where you are a real artist. It is you, in every moment, who is turning art into something that is not, and insisting that you are unworthy of this. In a very real sense, you are betraying yourself. You're preventing yourself from accepting the mantle that you want so much, which is a huge waste of time. Imagine all your criteria were met. Imagine all your wildest and most specific artist dreams come true. Who pins the medal to your chest? Who approves the licensure that is used by the International Board of Artist Accreditation to let everybody know that you're for real? It's you. If it's going to happen at all, the day those dreams come true, it's going to be you accepting it and bestowing this boon upon yourself. Of course, because it only lives in your mind. So what are you? in some sort of eternal, dualistic struggle against an internal adversarial you? Well, yeah, I, I know, that's how we feel a lot of the time, but it's not actually the case. Just give yourself the boon and move on. Possibility number two for why you might feel like someone with a creative drive who doesn't consider themselves an artist and is suffering because of it is because artists make art and you find yourself unable to make anything right now. You're not making art. So you're not an artist. Now maybe you've been thinking of embarking on the art journey for a while and haven't taken the plunge yet. Or maybe you find yourself in a bit of artist block, a bit of a dry spell. Maybe you were on the art path for a long time, making things, and then you pulled off the hike and hitched a tent and stayed there for a year or two. So are you really not an artist? Ah, no. See, you forgot that there is no such thing as art. There are only artists. 
Art and art practices are utterly subjective, with no objective criteria or substantial form. One person's practice is another person's play. One person's masterpiece is another person's literal trash that belongs in a dumpster and not in a making a point kind of a way. What you think is true, real, disciplined practice, another artist thinks is the height of folly, a ruse you fell for that distracts you from a true connection to art. All of these varying viewpoints are equally true, and in light of them, we see that art isn't structured. It has no true, solid, substantial form. So if art isn't real in any strong sense like that, how can the lack of it prevent you from being an artist? It can't, of course. And this leads us to a very strange realization. Being an artist isn't any specific day-to-day -day routine or practice or material output. Being an artist is just a sensibility. It is a particular way of interacting with the world that intermingles with our sense of self. The artist experiences things, people, places, other people's art, and is moved by them, moved to understand them, to replicate them, to interpret and share them. Really, the variety of ways an artist can be influenced by the world and then react to it are endless, uh, beyond endless. Now, maybe you already see where I'm going. Everyone is already a bit like this. This stuff is already happening to everybody. The only difference with the artist is that they notice their reactions. They notice how their experiences inspire, change, and move them. It's hard to understand the difference this noticing actually makes. It is the source of the creative drive to see and grow ever more drunk off the miracle of being so moved by things in life. Now, does all of that sound bigger or smaller than moving a pencil on the paper. Now don't let your societal prejudice against emotional descriptions like the sappy one that I just made get in the way. Don't let them get in the way just yet. Before your practical prejudices, which sounds like it might be the more important part, stylus moves across surface, or person is affected by experience through means evanescent in such a way that they yearn to relive, recreate, and reinterpret that experience. So, it's a sensibility before it is an act or an output. If you rest there, nothing is keeping you from dissolving your imagined barriers and just relaxing into your current situation, whatever it may be. About to start out, period of prolonged practice, period of art block, or an era of prodigious masterful output. And this is why it's very important to be an artist for those who are drawn to it. Because to feel at odds with that impulse, with that internal drive, is to deny not a job or a hobby or a vocation. It is to deny a worldview, a very powerful lens through which the creative mind not views the world, but experiences it, is connected to it. It's not actually separate. It is the way the creative person lives. That's a very painful thing to turn away from. Now let's not forget that even with all our disclaimers and quantifiers and the emotional and mushy descriptions that we tend to use for the creative drive can make it sound like we're puffing this thing up. And we shouldn't. There's nothing great, noble, or special about self-identifying as an artist or experiencing life this way. You didn't choose it in any important sense. Who knows how the roiling demon of art takes up residence in each of our hearts and what particular elements of our lives invited it in in the first place. There's no grounds for taking self-important pride in things you do not command. But, like we said at the beginning, this doesn't change the fact that it is indeed important to feel like an artist for so many of us. It's a bit of a paradox that I think is better accepted than denied. But hopefully you've gotten a bit of an idea that there is nothing in the way of you in the practice, of thinking of yourself as involved and connected with this thing as you'd like. The only thing getting in our way are these insubstantial mental traps that we designed for ourselves. You don't need to work on them, dismantle them, or dodge them. They're already nothing. Just move right along. And if you must venture out into that darkened field and find 
that beautiful, intricately carved goal that you threw out there so long ago. Well, I wish you the best of luck. That's a part of a lot of people's journeys and a necessary one. So go for it. And thanks for drawing today.